<sighs> Good morning. Welcome to Sunday. Nice to see y'all. Carol, I was really happy to hear that you're going to be joining us in the prison dharma thing. Um, that's really cool. It'll be great to have you. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Um, greeting to the people I can see on Zoom and good morning to the people I can't see on Facebook and those watching later on YouTube. Nice to have you with us all, wherever you are. Um, today I'm continuing with what I have been talking about the last few weeks, um, the art of being well. Um, I've talked about um, how we relate to our thoughts and how we relate to our feelings. Um, today I'm going to talk about just giving ourselves permission to have our experience, <laughs> which is something that some of us resist. And I'm going to talk specifically um, about anger, giving ourselves permission to experience anger. Um, because anger, there's a lot of negative rhetoric around anger. And I thought, um, if we're going to be talking about being well, whatever our experience is, um, that one needs some time. So, uh, we'll spend some time on that today. So, but first we're going to meditate. <coughs> so first I'd like to invite you to find a meditation posture where you can, if you're sitting up, where you can be relaxed. But alert, comfortable, com as comfortable as you can be. Some of us have aches and pains and stuff going on. It's okay. I got a question recently from somebody about meditating lying down. Um, if you are lying down, I suggest you have your arms your elbows resting on the floor and your hands up in front of you at a 90 degree angle. That way if you fall asleep, your hand will fall and you'll wake up. So we're just relaxing and settling in and letting our body rest in our meditation posture. You might want to tuck in your chin a little bit, which sort of straightens out the top of your spine without stressing or stretching the muscles in your neck. And just let your back fall into its natural curve without being rigid. Ideally, if you can do it, it's helpful to have your knees a little lower than your pelvis. That helps the spine be more straight. If you can't do that, that's fine. And gently close your eyes. And let's start with a few slow, deep breaths just to help us get connected to our body. About three quarters full, long, slow, deep, inhale. And a long, slow, Exhale, just a little deeper than usual. And 
And as you exhale, just let the body relax and soften. And letting your breathing return to normal. And I'd like to invite you to become aware of the touch points. With some sensations <clears throat> of your hand resting in your lap what you feel in your palms or whatever surface is resting in your lap. The sensation of your bottom on the cushion. Just being aware of what it feels like to be in your body sitting in this moment. And as you exhale, on the exhale, just relax the muscles in your face and the muscles around your eyes. And we're just receiving an in-breath. And on the out breath, to the degree that you can, relax your shoulders and your chest. Let your belly expand on the in breath, relax on the out breath. We tend to hold our belly tight. This is a time to just relax and allow a soft belly. Now let your attention come to the sensations of the body breathing. There's nothing you have to do. The body breathes on its own. Some people focus on the sensations of the air moving in and out of the nose. <clears throat> Some people focus on the sensations of the chest and belly moving up and down. Whatever is easy and most compelling we just rest our awareness and focus on breathing.
just riding the sensations of the in-breath all the way to the top. <clears throat> Noticing the transition from the in-breath to the out-breath. Writing the sensations of the out-breath all the way to the bottom. Noticing the sensations of the out-breath, transitioning to an in-breath. Just being with the rhythm of the body breathing in and out. And the mind wanders off. That's okay. The mind wanders off. It just does that. Can't control that. When you notice which may or may not be right away or may or may not be after some period of time. Without getting involved in the content of whatever the thought stream is, just acknowledge that thinking. And bring your attention and your focus back to being aware of the sensations of the body breathing. Wander off, come back, that's okay. There's no minimum or maximum amount of times that happens, just happens. And we just come back and start again as many times as we need to.
Thought may come and go. It's okay. Let them come. Let them go. And bring your awareness back to the breath.
And as we come towards the end of this sitting, just letting your body and your mind rest in the simplicity of this moment. And may it be that whatever benefit you received from this sitting, from this practice, enables you to view the world with kindness and compassion, to move around in your life a little more centered, a little more compassionate with yourself when you're not centered. And may it be that the benefits of this practice flow from and through you out into the world as compassion and kindness May the benefits of this practice radiate from you into your household to the people you meet day to day, walking around on the street today, the checkout person at the grocery store, someone who holds the door for you, someone you have a conversation with. May it be that the peace and, this, and the compassion of this practice permeate the world around you. May it be that the benefits of this practice be of benefit to all beings everywhere. May all beings be happy. May all beings be well. May all beings be safe. May all beings be at ease and at peace. Thank you for your practice. Um, as usual, <coughs> excuse me, a little thing going on in the back of my throat today. Um, I've put the usual information in the chat. <coughs> um, the Zoom information for finding this call, which those of you on Zoom have already found it. Um, the links to uh, these sessions on Facebook were um, we're live and these sessions are also archived and uh, the link to Facebook uh, to uh, YouTube where all of these sessions are archived. Uh, also my contact information on my website if anybody has any questions or comments later or wants to get in touch with me. Um, I admit to and apologize for being a little unreliable about returning emails lately. Don't take it personally. It's just me being my usual spacey self. Um, and of course, all these teachings and sessions are completely freely given with no expectation of any kind of remuneration. Um, but if you feel so inclined, there's a link to make a donation. So, I've been talking about the art of being well. And what I mean by that 
is not that we feel good all the time, but the art of knowing that we are okay regardless of how we feel. We may be feeling great, then it's easy to remember that we're okay. We may be feeling something other than great, then it's harder to remember that we're okay. That feelings themselves are not a crisis. They're part of how we know we're alive. And, you know, I was a therapist in private practice for 25 years. And if there was a thread that ran through that, simplified, it's, I don't want to, I'm feeling this and I don't want it. Um, and a lot of time was spent first recognizing that we're having this experience and that it's okay to have this experience. Then we can heal it. Because I can't let go of anything I haven't embraced first. So we start by giving ourselves permission to have whatever experience it is that we're having. Um, if that's joy, if that's anger, if that's sadness, if that's elation, if it's grief, if it's love, whatever it is. And mindfulness helps us recognize when we are not doing that. Because we do sort of live in a don't worry, be happy culture. There was a political campaign that used um, the Bobby McFerrin song, Don't Worry, Be Happy as his theme song, and he made them stop. Because <laughs> we don't always get to do that. Anyway, that's all completely aside. Um, so, we recognize that we're having this experience. We accept it, and we give ourselves permission to have it. Which is not the same as giving ourselves permission to just do anything. We're just giving ourselves permission to be in this body, to be in this emotional body, to be in this spiritual body, and be okay with however that feels. There's a story I really like. There's an old spiritual master up in the mountains in the Himalayas, uh, ancient of days, um, and he's dying. And the word gets out and it gets back to his principal student who's studying in America. And the student decides he has to be at the bedside of the teacher when he dies. So he embarks for the mountains of Himalayas to go to the old man's cave. And this is not a small undertaking. Um, he takes a plane to uh, Bangkok, stays overnight, um, flies on to Kathmandu, um, drives as far as he can, gets on one of those buses that you see in the third world, um, rides that as far, you know, they, it's like these big vans with people clinging to the roof, and rides that as far as he can, and takes a mule wagon as far as that'll go, and then a horse, and then by foot, it takes weeks, and he gets to the cave. And he approaches the master, who by now can only lie down. And he sits down at the bedside and he says, Master, I'm here. What is the teaching? What is the essence of the teaching? And the master looks at him with total kindness and compassion and very barely lifts his head and says, it's just this. This is it. And he dies. <laughs> and the message I get from that is, this is it. This is the show. There's no rehearsal. As Lenny Bruce used to say, these are the jokes. They don't get funnier. So we may as well allow ourselves to be in whatever experience this is. This is it. So, we have these feelings. <laughs> sometimes we really like them, sometimes not so much. But there are no good or bad feelings. Feelings are not good. It's not like anger, good, 
happiness, anger bad, happiness good. Right? It's not like that. Um, feelings have three qualities and three qualities only. Um, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. This feels pleasant. I like it. This feels unpleasant. I don't like it. But if we meet that with some alternating form of attachment or aversion, that's a formula for suffering. Because all things are impermanent, especially feelings and states of mind. And if we're feeling good, if it's pleasant and we cling to it, when it starts to fade, now we're suffering. If we're feeling something that's difficult, like anger, grief, or sadness, or rage, or whatever it is, and we meet it with aversion, the act of trying to keep it away intensifies it and makes it last longer. And this is especially true of anger. Anger has a bad reputation. There's a lot of, I think, toxic rhetoric around anger, that thing you keep hearing about, you won't be punished for your anger, you'll be published by your anger. I think that's a load of crap. Um, you'll be punished, you will punish yourself if you believe that being angry makes you wrong. There's a lot of rhetoric in the 12 step world about anger is not okay. Um, anger is a legitimate response. Anger is a legitimate response to abuse. Anger is a legitimate response to having your boundaries crossed. Anger is a form of grief. I've heard it said that grief plus fear equals anger. And as I said before, anger has a bad reputation because people equate being angry with doing angry things. But it doesn't have to be that way. Feelings are not facts. They just kind of come and go. And feelings are also not a call to action. So the art of angry, of being angry, the art of anger, is being so angry you can yell at somebody, but you don't yell at them. Being so angry, you can like bop somebody upside the head, but you don't. <laughs> Maintaining your, your cool. Um, when I was doing therapy, I took insurance. A lot of therapists don't, because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Because um, I, I wanted to make that available to people for you know, $15, $25. Um, and you get these calls from insurance companies after you've been seeing somebody for six or eight or 10 weeks. It always starts off with some version of how, we just want to know how it's going, uh, which is code for, we want to know how much longer we have to keep paying for this. And I used to get really angry at those calls. And I, at the beginning, I wasn't really nice to those people. <laughs> and then I realized that that's a character defect. Um, I wasn't aiding my clients. I wasn't aiding them. I wasn't moving the process along. But I was letting my anger control those situations. And mindfulness allows us to keep asking the question, who do I want to be when I show up? And I decided I didn't want to be that guy. I have, there's a lot of anger in my system and I have a history of, being, of, of anger. Um, and I decided to be okay with it. I just don't want to be the guy who hurls it at people at random. So as I said, the art of anger is to experience it like any other feeling, but not allow anger to relieve us of our ability to make good choices. Not allow our anger to push us into doing harm to others or ourselves. To say, oh, I'm having this experience, I feel angry today. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm in Florida for some period of weeks, and I am a baseball fan. I shouldn't say this to my friends in Kentucky and Indiana, but, you know, there's baseball. Then there's, like, that other stuff they do where there isn't any baseball. And then there's more baseball. 
So I came down here and I bought tickets to five spring training games. Because the Mets, the Yankees, and the Phillies all play within like five miles of here. And so far two of those games have been canceled because they don't have a contract. And I'm not going to get really editorialized about millionaires and billionaires arguing over who gets to, how they divide a very large pie. But I'm angry. And I actually had the thought of calling the commissioner's office and saying, I'm angry. What would be the point? <laughs> I'm just willing to allow that energy to be what it is. And on the scale of things, having like walked through the slums of, it, of the third world, it's not a big deal. But I'm allowing myself to have that experience. And anger can be useful. One of my favorite writers is a guy named Victor Villasenor, V-I-L-L-A-S-E-N-O-R. You should read him. Um, I was driving down the road and I heard him being interviewed on the radio and I didn't know who he was. And I had this thought, I should be reading this guy. Because he was talking about how he used his anger to his benefit. His most famous book is called Reign of Gold. Check it out. It's the only book that ever competed with To Kill a Mockingbird for my favorite book. And what he said was when his first novel came out, um, they released it as what's called the trade paperback. A trade paperback is on cheap paper. They wanted to release it as a trade paperback. It's on cheap paper, cheap binding, cheap glue on the spine. Um, they throw it out into the distribution channel with no promotion, no money, no nothing behind it. Um, they ship it out to the bookstores. Nobody knows about it. Um, it sits on a shelf for two to four weeks uh, when nobody buys it. Uh, the bookstores send them back and they pulp them. And he got really angry about that. And his anger gave him the energy to say, no, you can't do that. His ability to make good choices while he was angry helped him find and use the energy to negotiate a better contract. Now he's a multiple award winning writer and it's, it's totally amazing. But his anger helped him move that process forward. Anger is also a good thing because it lets us know when a boundary has been crossed. It lets us know we're being wronged or hurt or abused. And it helps us set boundaries. I know that this is unacceptable to me. I'm not going to turn that around and like angrily confront you and say, you can't do that. But I am going to say to myself, and maybe to you, I'm not available for that. But anger was the clue. It gives us energy. Victor Villasen, your story is a perfect example of how anger gives us energy. It can help us achieve positive results. Uh, I was a journalist before I was a shrink. I was a reporter for 20 years. Yes, I'm that old that I've done things in 20 and 25 year increments now. And part of being a journalist working full time in a newspaper is you're angry at your editor all the time because the, um, the joke about editors, if they were any good, they'd still be writers. Those who can't write, edit. Those who can't edit, publish. So I would be angry because occasionally an editor would turn my writing into hash. Um, the anger gave me the ability and the energy to confront him, while my ability to control my anger gave me the ability to do that without ruffling feathers, without making enemies, without getting him or me in trouble. Just letting him know this is not okay. And anger can help us be optimistic. It can encourage us to focus on what we hope to achieve. Rather than merely focus on the pain or the insult or the victimization, anger can say, okay, find a path forward. When we're angry, we often feel positive about our ability to affect change. It can be empowering. It doesn't have to be harsh. It can help us negotiate. When I was self-employed, I was a 
freelance writer, but you know, while I was in grad school, um, I made a living as a freelance writer, and it was a good time to do it because I had been at the San Francisco Chronicle covering technology, and now we were in the dot-com boom, and I had all those contacts, and I was doing writing projects uh, for technology companies. And I negotiated several contracts for writing projects, consulting jobs, and other services, and anger helped me stand up for what I wanted without damaging those relationships. You know, these people would call me up, and they say, we'd like you to do this writing project. Um, and it's going to be 1,500 words, and we need it by next Thursday. Today is Monday. Um, and we'll pay you $200. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Um, here's what I'm available for. It didn't have to be, no, God damn it. <laughs> Although sometimes I felt that way. Then you go through the whole editing process, which is a whole other exercise and boundaries. And an important thing about anger, and by the way, I still have a lot of those relationships, even though I'm not doing that work anymore. And people still occasionally call me to consult on writing projects and stuff like that. Anger is also an important part of recovery from trauma. Um, I worked with a lot of trauma survivors, a lot of survivors um, of childhood trauma um, as a shrink, and the anger made people feel safe. Someone once told me in a therapy session that anger made him feel like nobody could mess with me, and that was the only way he could feel safe enough to move around the world at that time. Now, eventually he healed that, and it was a lot of work. He worked hard on learning to control himself when he was anger and let the anger help him stand up for himself. Sometimes that's what we need. So, all of this points at self-compassion. All of this points at not judging ourselves for the way we feel and what we think. Thoughts and feelings do not make karma. I may think and feel that guy's an a-hole, that's fine, as long as I don't tell him. <laughs> right? Um, you know, my neighbor across the street in, in Indiana uh, likes to mow his lawn. I think he you know, in my fantasy mind, he looks in my window to make sure I'm meditating before he starts his lawnmower. And which I'm sure he doesn't, because I'm not that, you know, I'm not really that paranoid. Um, but every now and then I get some version of, I'll cross the street and tell him to. But I don't have to do that. Like any other emotion, Anger is a form of energy that we feel in our body. If I feel sadness, it's going to be like down here in my belly. And if I feel angry, it feels like my shoulders are getting tight and trying to fold my body in half, so we're like defended position. It's just energy. Sadness is just energy. And then we attach a narrative and a label, and now it's feeling, right? And as I say over and over again, our experience is in two parts. Here's what happens. Here's what we tell ourselves about what happens. Here's what happens. I feel angry. Here's what we tell ourselves about what happens. Now, often people say that for some reason, if I'm not okay, I'm doing something wrong. But what if we say, oh, I'm angry because that hurts, because that's not okay with me. I'm still okay, I'm just having this feeling. Because a lot of the toxic rhetoric around anger leads people to believe that when they feel anger, they're doing something wrong. But feelings are just feelings. They are not facts, and they are not calls to action, and they are not a referendum on our character. They're just feelings. In 2001, the Dalai Lama came to Mountain View, California, when I was living there. He filled the amphitheater. It was really cool. 
Um, I've made a donation to the Tibetan Buddhist Center so I could get good seats. And uh, he was there for three days, and on the third night he did a Q&A, which is like really, really cool. You know, I mean, it's 10,000 people, but so there were only a handful of questions that got through, but there's the Dalai Lama answering questions, right? And someone asked him, what about anger and frustration? And he like paused, he did one of these. I said, well, I experienced that. Like it's nothing. <laughs> it's just part of the flow of experience. So, if you feel angry, bow to it. If you feel sad, bow to that too. And if you feel joy, bow to that. And take these things as an opportunity for self-compassion. To remind yourself that you're okay and you're doing the best you can and it's good enough. So, thank you for your kind attention. Any questions or comments? Thoughts or feeling? Ken, you're full of it. Ken, that really took me off. Part of being ang part of the dealing with anger is letting people be angry with you and knowing that that's okay. They're allowed to do that. All right then, I invite you to be kind with the person in the mirror. I invite you to be compassionate with the person in the mirror and to let that radiate from you. So thank you for your kind attention and I will see you all next week. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Bye.